the greatest energy source in the universe. Except if I touch it, it would explode and destroy all of New York City, parts of Connecticut and New Jersey. In the past 10 years, the Large Hadron Collider, a remarkable feat of scientific exploration, has delved into the uncharted territories of the universe. It has unraveled the enigmas concealed within the smallest units of existence. However, a sudden and astonishing turn of events has sent shockwaves through the scientific community, even leaving prominent figures like Michio Kaku deeply concerned. The question looms large. What are the implications of CERN shutting down the Large Hadron Collider? Why do esteemed scientists entertain the notion of doomsday scenarios for our planet? Join us as we unearth this mystery and explore whether there's a genuine cause for public alarm regarding CERN. The Large Hadron Collider, located at the European Council for Nuclear Research near Geneva, Switzerland, came back to life in April 2022 after a substantial three-year hiatus, during which it underwent extensive upgrades and maintenance. This momentous occasion marked the commencement of a remarkable scientific endeavour known as RUN3. This undertaking holds the promise of a series of astonishing experiments that will captivate global interest until 2024. However, CERN has recently issued a rather disconcerting statement concerning the reactivation of this renowned scientific marvel. CERN, in collaboration with over 10,000 scientists and involving hundreds of universities and laboratories spanning numerous countries, constructed the largest and highest energy particle collider between 1998 and 2008. Situated within a tunnel with a circumference of 27 kilometers, the LHC lies approximately 175 meters beneath the border shared by France and Switzerland near Geneva. Now here's where it gets juicy. In 2010, this behemoth of science conducted its maiden voyage into the unknown by smashing particles together at an energy level of 3.5 tera electron volts per beam, effectively quadrupling the previous world record. But CERN didn't stop there. They went on a particle pummeling rampage, performing subsequent upgrades that jacked up its energy capacity to a jaw-dropping 6.5 tera electron volts per beam. Think of it as going from a firecracker to a supernova in the world of particle collisions. Within this colossal ring, there are not one, not two, but four locations where particles collide in a physics showdown. And surrounding these collision hotspots, there are seven meticulously crafted detectors, each poised like a cosmic paparazzo waiting to capture the rarest of particle interactions. But what's the big deal, you ask? Well, while the LHC's main gig is smashing protons into protons, it's also got a hidden talent. The ability to accelerate heavy ion beams. This helps physicists test their most daring hypotheses and confirm the wild predictions of particle physics theories. Chief among its quests is the quest to scrutinise the enigmatic Higgs boson, a particle of such intrigue that it earned itself the moniker of the God Particle. The LHC also serves as a gateway to explore a veritable menagerie of exotic particles foretold by supersymmetric theories, kind of like opening Pandora's box but with particle physics. Now, you might be wondering, what's with the name Large Hadron Collider? Well, Hadron is physicists speak for subatomic particles that are a bit like the universe's tiniest nesting dolls. They're composed of even tinier bits called quarks, all held together by a force so strong it's like particle glue. Think of it as the force that glues quarks together, like electromagnetism keeps atoms and molecules cosy. In the Hadron Club, you've got famous members like protons and neutrons known as baryons, and some cool ones called mesons, including the ever-popular pion and kaon. Now, back to our particle playground. The collider, at its core, is a masterful particle accelerator. It's like the ultimate subatomic racetrack, where particles zip around at mind-boggling speeds. What sets it apart is its ability to take two particle beams, send them hurtling toward each other, and orchestrate epic collisions. Scientists get to observe the aftermath of these high-speed smash-ups and in doing so, uncover the secrets of the subatomic realm. But why go to all this trouble of building a colossal ring underground? Well, you see, many of the resultant particles from these collisions exist fleetingly, 
undergoing rapid decay within exceedingly short time frames. Hence, studying these ephemeral byproducts necessitates the use of a collider due to the impracticality of alternative methods. Moreover, the Earth's crust itself offers inherent shielding against background radiation. The construction of this tunnel complex occurred between 1983 and 1988, resulting in the creation of three tunnels, each with an 8-metre width and lined with concrete. These tunnels traverse the boundary that separates Switzerland and France at four specific points. Although a significant portion of its length falls within French territory, the surface level facility accommodates supplementary equipment, including compressors, ventilation systems, control electronics and refrigeration units. As the LAC revved up for its grand debut on September 10, 2008, the universe had other plans. During its initial testing phase, a magnet quench incident turned the party into a bit of a disaster. More than 50 superconducting magnets, their mounts and the previous vacuum pipes all suffered substantial damage. It was like trying to launch a spaceship and then realising you forgot the keys. This incident meant a frustrating 14-month delay, extending the already lengthy wait for groundbreaking experiments. Finally, in 2010, after some serious patching up, the LHC was ready to roll. From 2010 to 2013, it played cosmic billiards with particles, smashing protons into each other at energies of up to 4 tera electron volts. During this smashing success of a run, the LHC delivered some show-stopping discoveries. They managed to bag the Higgs boson, a particle that had eluded scientists for ages. Additionally, scientists made findings related to the bottomonium state and the initial creation of quark gluon plasma. In a nutshell, the LHC achieved its main mission – to find the elusive Higgs boson, a critical piece in the cosmic puzzle that physicists had theorised about for ages. You see, the Higgs boson was a bit of a shy character. It had a substantial mass and a complex nature which made it hard to spot. The theory said it should exist, but it was like trying to find a needle in the universe's haystack. CERN scientists figured that if the standard model, the reigning theory in particle physics, was right, the LHC would be producing these Higgs bosons all over the place, like a subatomic Higgs party. But the LHC wasn't just about hunting the Higgs. It also took a detour into the realm of supersymmetric particles and other bizarre entities that had physicists rubbing their chins in contemplation. After this initial three-year run, the LHC took a well-deserved break for upgrades. This hiatus stretched until 2015, and then the LHC roared back into life for another three years of experiments. Another extended downtime followed until 2022, when the LHC was once again activated. This time, it came back with an upgraded maximum beam energy of 6.8 tera electron volts, making it even more of a particle-smashing beast. This phase was expected to keep the scientists busy until 2026. But here's where things get a bit weird. During the third run of the LHC on July 7th, scientists got a shock. Not the forgot to turn off the lights kind of shock, but something much more cosmic. A mysterious crack appeared in Earth's magnetic field, and it wasn't a brief blip on the radar. This strange gap hung around for a whopping 14 hours. This crack in the cosmic armour allowed potent solar winds to sweep in, stirring up geomagnetic storms that painted the skies with breathtaking and awe-inspiring auroras. The geomagnetic storm triggered by this cosmic crack painted an aurora in the sky so mesmerising that even scientists couldn't resist its celestial allure. However, the burning question remained. What was the cosmic culprit behind this mysterious crack? And what was the LHC's role in all of this cosmic drama? Well, it turns out this crack had a cosmic origin, and it's called a co-rotating interaction region from the Sun, or more simply, a CIR. Now these CIRs are like enormous plasma structures that form in the solar system's middle latitudes, where the speedy and sluggish solar winds decide to have a cosmic tango. Imagine it as the dance floor of the universe. The whole action takes place within an invisible bubble called the heliosphere, which includes the Sun's magnetic field and its gusty solar wind. These CIRs are kind of like distant cousins of coronal mass ejections, CMEs, celestial cannonballs hurled from the Sun toward our cosy planet. 
Inside these CIRs, there's a cosmic carnival of shockwaves and intense magnetic fields that often translate into jaw-dropping space weather displays like the dazzling auroras. So, back on that fateful July 7th, this specific CIR decided to make an entrance and gave our magnetic field a good old cosmic shake-up. It unleashed a G1-class geomagnetic storm, which according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA, is sort of like a mild storm in the grand scheme of space weather. Interestingly, they noticed that this CIR came with a bonus feature, a coronal mass ejection tucked within the solar wind ahead of it. Quite the cosmic package, right? Now, should you be worried about all this magnetic field crack business? Well, experts say there's no need to hit the panic button. You see, these cracks are not exactly a rarity. Earth's magnetic field, our trusty cosmic shield, often sports these openings. Think of it like a drafty old house during a storm, with a window that just won't close. While it usually does a great job of keeping space storms at bay, a bit of cosmic energy occasionally slips through these gaps, like a bit of rain leaking through your roof during a downpour. Normally, these magnetic cracks open and shut in the blink of an eye. But sometimes, like in this case, they decide to stick around for a while, and it lasts for hours. In 2003, Harold Freyer, the lead author of a study on this phenomenon, likened Earth's magnetic shield to a drafty house with an open window during a storm. This analogy illustrates that while this protective barrier primarily diverts the storm's impact, some energy manages to slip through its gaps, much like a storm damaging a couch indoors. In a similar fashion, the magnetic shield typically protects against space storms, yet some energy can infiltrate through its fissures, occasionally causing disruptions in satellite radio communications and power systems. Fortunately, this particular crack did not result in any radio or power failures. Instead, residents of Canada and the US were treated to the breathtaking spectacle of the Northern Lights, highlighting the stunning effects of this magnetic field breach. But there's more to this cosmic story. Scientists are telling us that the Sun is gearing up for a cosmic carnival of its own. It's about to enter its most active phase in the solar cycle, and it's happening a bit earlier than expected. What does this mean for us Earthlings? Well, get ready to witness more of these celestial light shows. The chances of catching auroras in the night sky are about to go up, and the universe's light display is just getting started. What are your thoughts on this? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more captivating videos like this. Thanks for watching.